Nido ma Bernice Johnson Laxdal, Sakta Wahigi Opigian, um, <clears throat> Igo Atsumwinigi Mama Wastayak, Miriam Aste, Ipm Sahamak, um, Aski, Tansumai Sigi Sigagi Go, Isikati Go, Pisamak, Igo, um, Nan Tortigui. A uh, thousand people, the Tasuak Isla Cross, XP, Kagi, Pio Pigian. Ego, Nanto 1963, Gata Taman. So, Muya Tagayas. Miriam. Miriam Kernan is Titi Kasson, and that's about where my Kri ends, unfortunately. My name is Miriam Kerner and I'm a co-author of um, When the Trees Crackle with Gold and also the illustrator. And um, as Bernice was saying, uh, she grew up in Ala La Cross and this is the story of her growing up and also the story of um, going through different seasons um, of the Woodland Cree calendar. We're going to read the book to you and I hope you're going to learn some Cree words with us. And then um, um, Bernice will tell us some stories about what her child childhood was like when she grew up. Mm -hmm. um, why dialect the way I am yak? Um, Plains Cree, Itigui, Dagitrian, um, Upper Woodland, uh, Plains Cree. Um, okay, we're going to read the Y dialect to you. Um, um, that's the dialect that <coughs> Bernice um, spoke when she grew up in Ala La Crosse, and of course here in La Ronge we speak the TH dialect. Um, January. Kisi Pisem. So can you say that with us? Kisi Pisem. The Great Moon. When the Great Moon rises over the silent forest and the bear sleeps safely in her den, we bring in wood. Nipiti Kwachimitanan. Nipiti Kwachimitanan. To protect us from the cold. We used to uh, help by bringing in wood, being small kids in the family. It would be our job to help bring in wood. The fire keeps us warm and also makes uh, the house uh, nice and comfortable. And so we could um, have water for food. Um, we could also have warm water for doing laundry, all the house things. The house really needs a lot of um, wood. So that was our job to help. But the parents did a lot too. February. Mikisui Pisum. Mikisui Pisum. Eagle Moon. When the eagle returns to the river bank and dad comes home to sell his fur, we catch a ride. Nipusinan. Nipusinan. On his toboggan. Um, when my dad came home from the trap line, Kagipigiwitana, two weeks he gets a pwhitit. Kapigiwit, kwes gipihonan. We used to wait so eagerly when he was coming home because we hadn't seen him in a while and we'd watch for him to come across the lake with his dog team and um, we'd go out to meet him and some people like the younger ones would catch a ride. He would bring home his furs and he would go and sell them. That was his job. Mm -hmm. So it's seasonal work. And we got some beaver, beaver um, hides here and we got all our stuff on here and some of the furs that he would bring home from the trap line. You can pass it around and feel and cuddle with it. <laughs> and once the furs were um, dealt with, we would sell some for um, income, but some of them would be used for uh, decorating um, the sewing that my mom did. These ones are beaver mitts here too. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's actually uh, my, my favorite picture of the months. Of course, you know, I got sled dogs and I always wanted to know what life was like in the past. Like how, how did people live here before there was skidoos and before there was 
um, roads and, and when people just traveled by dog teams. So I really, really enjoyed listening to Bernice tell me stories about what life was like. And, and I liked it so much, I actually have another book here. It's just called When We Had Sled Dogs. Um, uh, lear learning about how people did life, life in the past. Okay, we're going to go on to March. March. Neskipisem. Neskipisem. Goose moon. When the geese announce the arrival of spring, we clean up. Nekanachitanan. Nekanachitanan. The yard with mom. Okay. Uh, where the wood is kept, there's usually a lot of um, debris around the, the ground. And that would be our, our job to rake that up. Because if you don't rake it up, the ice underneath is going to pile up and it's going to be uh, hard to walk come April um, when spring uh, continues. So we had to clean up the debris off the wood pile area. That's usually where you clean up. April. Aigipisim. Frog moon. When the frog song rises from the stillness of the snow, we prepare the garden. For a new growing season. We used to uh, find uh, cans like uh, tomato soup cans, uh, large cans, and start our plants in there. Plants that would take longer to grow, like tomato plants. So we'd start those indoors at that time. And you also look at your uh, garden from, you know, you start preparing it. That's our job in April. May. Saga. Saga Pega Wipisim. Saga Pega Wipisim. Leaf budding moon. When the trees give birth to young green leaves and the loon lays her eggs along the lake shore's edge, we go gill netting. Nipakitahuanan. Nipakatiwanan. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, when the ice moves from the shore, it's already starting to warm up outside. We would uh, go fishing with an adult and uh, it would be such a treat to go in a boat for your first boat ride in the spring. and. Uh, we would put a fish net out only a small amount of time and then come back to shore again. And there's many different names in Greece for the, for the different moons, isn't it? Like there's other, other names, some is leaf budding moon, some is egg, egg laying moon. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering like one word we keep seeing o over and over again when we go through all these um, moons, um, Kisipisum, Migisuripisum, Niskipisum, what word do we keep saying again and again? Pisum. Be here. Be Good listening. And what, what, what does Pisum mean, Benice? Um, Pisum is sun, but it could also mean moon. So I'm guessing we're describing the moon of uh, the month mm -hmm. because uh, the seasons go through different changes. The earth goes through different changes and we're describing them. Now here is June. June. Pascha we how we peace him. Pascha how we peace him. Egg hatching moon. When the young birds break their fragile shells, we go on a picnic. Nikotawanan. Nikotawanan. Okay. For Today the day. we have a fire here. That's what we would do. Mom would be coming out of the house with the baby, and uh, it's starting to warm up outside. The days are getting longer. We would go for a picnic, and uh, that would be such a fun time. There'd be something for the kids to eat 
and our parents would probably have fish. They would stick a, uh, put a stick in the ground and put the fish over the coals to cook. It's called um, aponaskuk. That's how we would cook our fish, and then you turn it over, finish cooking it, and then they would eat, and then we'd go home. We'd always be watching the ice on the shore, because there's still ice on the shore at that time. Paskawi hippiesem. Paskawi hippiesem, feather melting moon. When the waterfowl's feathers float in the summer breeze, we smoke fish. Nikaskapa sonanik. We uh, would leave our house for about four days, three, four days, and go uh, camping on the lake. Because we have gardens, we'd have to come home and take care of them. August. Opahuipisem. Opahuipisem. Flying up moon. When the young birds practice using their wings, we pick blueberries. Nemosanan. Nemosanan in the old burn. We would go uh, berry picking. And my mom would uh, give the kids, this is the only time she would buy bubble gum for us in 1963. <laughs> <laughs> um, she would give us bubble gum and so we'd be chewing and that way we wouldn't be eating blueberries. <laughs> but by the end of the, the berry picking time, our gum were usually <laughs> purple. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I think that's my favorite story. September. No hit, no chihitu weepiesem. No chihitu weepiesem. Rutting moon, when the bull moose calls echoes across the lake, we go hunting. Nemachanan. Nemachanan, in our canoe. We would, this is a camping trip, and our mom and dad would take us to a certain spot where all the kids had to be quiet, just like you are right now, because when my, my dad would go farther in a canoe to go hunting. So it was always a happy time. Because the moose walk after, like when the dawn is breaking, like say four o'clock, three o'clock. So that's what the hunter listens for. October? Uh huh. October. Pima. Pima how we peesem. Pima how we peesem. Migrating moon. When the birds begin their long flight south, we can cranberries. Neminisa pukanan. For the cold winter to come. Um, even in uh, uh, September when my dad went hunting, uh, he would bring back uh, cranberries. And those cranberries would be, my mom would have enough time to put them into jars, like boil up the berries with water and sugar. And, and prepare them for uh, pies in the winter. Mm. November. Ihikopiwipisum. 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 Hoarfrost moon. When hoarfrost flowers grow on the leafless trees, we sort beads. Netapsa, netapsa heminanan. Netapsa heminanan. For a new pair of moccasins. When my mother was getting ready to uh, do her uh, sewing in the winter, we would have beads like this. And we'd have to sort out the colors. So one sister might have yellow, one sister might have red, and we'd have to string them up this way. And uh, that way my mom could sew so much quicker. And these actually are some um, beadworks by your mom, isn't it? Yes, they are. Did she make them for you or did she, was she wearing them? Uh, <laughs> when I was interning, uh, she made these for me. <laughs> nice. I was able to go home with our young son 
and then turn it all across school. So she made these for me. And then I think this was like high school. This is a long time ago. She made these for me. Nice. December. Power chicken is the sippies. Power tagana si sippies. Frost exploding moon. When the trees crackle with cold, we stay close to home. Kokum tells us stories of times long past while we sue. Nikasquasunan. Nikasquasunan. So my mum would make um, presents like these, and the uh, nurses would buy them off us, the teachers, and uh, they would take them back home. So that was uh, a way to make money for my mom, so we would have Sears orders we could buy and uh, food for uh, special cakes. We call it lapachin. You put uh, batter into a can, you, you seal it and then you boil it like you would uh, a jar of food. I think came from the French, we'd have lapachin. Oh, nice. And we'd have, uh, Christmas oranges and then the curly candy and all sorts of good things. Once my mother sold all of her uh, stuff like this. So that was a way to make uh, money as well. Mm. Thank you so much, Bernice, for, for sharing the stories. I can never get enough to listen to them. And I got a question for you. So when we're talking about all the uh, moons, um, is there something that you noticed was something that was similar that connected them all? What were they all named after? Which uh, moon do you remember? Kisibism? That's the oldest oh, you month. Don't, yeah, you don't need to remember the queen names if you don't remember those. But do you remember the English, the English names for the moons? I'm going to go back through the book here. And just randomly, just a couple of randomly. Which one was that? And what was it? What, what was it in Cree? Like the English word for the Cree translation? Goose moon. Um, what was happening in June? Air catching. Oh, Bahui. Taking berries. Fly. That would be a good one too. That would be a good good name for that moon too. What, what are the young birds doing? Flying up, flying up moon, flying up moon. Yes. So, so, what do you think all these moons are named after? What do they? What's happening in the month? Yes. What's happening in that month in nature? That's right. So all the Cree moons on the calendar are named after something that's happening in that month in nature. What do you think that is? Like today would be Takayao. Takayao Kisugao. It's a cold day. It's a cold day. <laughs> Why was it important to the people to name the moons after what was happening in nature? And we can look in the book again. So what look look now look at what the people are doing. What are they doing here? Fishing. Fishing. And then later on. Uh, what are they doing here? Hunting. Hunting. So they hunt and they fish and all their names are named after something in nature. So why do you think that is? So they remember, yes. Yeah, so exactly. They're now, they're, they now, they're now what is happening in the time of the season. They can prepare themselves for it, right? So they're yeah. now... And now um, when the eagle returns to the river bank, it's the beginning of spring and I hear, I hear lots of elders in town say, oh, have you seen your first eagle yet? Yes, <laughs> yeah, they ask each other. Mm -hmm. So that's a sign. It's like the groundhog. <laughs> what did the groundhog do this year? Like we all want to know, is spring coming? Well, same with uh, Mikisu. Have you seen Mikisu yet? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's a sign of spring. All right. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you very much for, for coming and sitting uh, at the fire with us today. And thank you very much for Saskatchewan Network, Net Network to give us opportunity to share the story with, yeah. with you. Okay, and chair. Okay, mm -hmm. Right on. Naskumanan. <laughs> Naskumanan. We're grateful. Uh, yes, thank you very much. And uh, we'll turn it over to questioning for the live um, audience now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you very much for um, listening. Uh, we got lots of questions coming in here and we'll start with the grade one and two class from Penn School. Okay. Pierre Goma, how do you know the Cree words you just speak? Um, I know the Cree words from learning from my parents. And then as you grow up, you pick up more words. As you go to school, there's more words. And that's how we know the Cree words. Hey. <laughs> Why is it a calendar, Tastil? Um, it is a calendar because uh, it's one way of discussing uh, a story. You follow a pattern. So we decided to go through the calendar to tell what happens each month. And then it starts describing the seasons. So that's why we chose that. And why did we include Cree words and English words? We decided to include both because um, it's saying the same thing. It's uh, basically learning Cree at the same time as you're learning English. And it's, it was my way of learning the words the first time. So this is why we decided to include both. Very good questions. Those mm -hmm. are from Penn's school. And there's one here. How did you draw the Northern Lights? So I'm the illustrator um, of the book. And um, when I was drawing the Northern Lights, I used watercolor paper, um, paper and watercolor paints. And um, I had little layers. I would just start with the lightest color first, paint that in, and then I would go over it with a little bit of a darker color and keep going that and make all these little layers. And because watercolors are transparent, it looks like the Northern Lights. Um, mm -hmm. Next question is, how did you get so good at writing? <laughs> <laughs> Bernice and I had 17 drafts for this story. <laughs> lots of practice, lots of practice. and. Um, learning from other people, getting feedback, and um, just keep going it, just keep doing it. And, um, uh, the next question I, I'll, I'll take, um, can you say all the Cree words in the book for us? Uh, today, if you look on the website, the information is there, you can go into the website, look a little closer, and the words are there. Mm -hmm, it's so uh, that's a very good question. It's on uh, saskliteracy.ca slash crackle, and Benice's um, words are all in there in her own, in her own um, dialect. Yeah, in her own dialect. Um, the pre-kindergarten students from Bar Colony Elementary School are asking. How, do you, how does smoked fish taste, and how do you do it? If I was thinking if you have bacon, some, some bacon has smoke taste in it, and so does um, oysters, I was thinking, are smoked. If you know that taste, then that's what uh, the fish tastes like. And um, you could cook it over the fire and uh, smoke it there. Or else you can cook it on a uh, barbecue and um, you put your fish flat on it and um, it just cooks slowly. And um, everything takes time, so you'll get to taste some soon. <laughs> 
And Legacy Park Elementary School from Weyborn, um, Mrs. Andrews, grade six class is asking. In Cree, we see long words that are phrases. How different cultures invent their languages shows us that, shows us what is important to their culture. What language, I'm sorry, what values do these long jointed words show us about the Cree culture? Um, most most uh, words are descriptive. They describe the situation. I'm thinking about, um, we hop onto that uh, dad's toboggan, Nipusanan. It's a nice small word, so I'll use that as an example. It tells how many people are on the toboggan, how many people would be in a car, Nipusanan. If it, were, if it was you by yourself, you would say Nipusin. I'm all by myself. So it's very descriptive. Mm -hmm. Can you please give us an example that shows a difference between Western and Cree understandings of the season? Um, in North America, we describe four seasons. Up here, we describe six seasons, and that's basically it. We have a long fall season, and it describes the situation, what's happening outside. When the first, um, when leaves start falling, that's fall, it's still warm out, there's mosquitoes, and then they start disappearing, and then you see, you see, a change, and it's still fall, as mm -hmm. as we understand uh, December. I think that's when winter solstice is, and uh, so it's been fall, fall, fall for a long time. So it's describing the seasons. It makes it six, and same with spring. Spring, um, we announce its arrival on calendar in the Western culture, but you know. The mosquitoes are not out right away. The flies aren't out. Um, it takes a while for the earth to catch up. So it's describing the season. So we call, we call, we have spring into, uh, changed into two seasons. Yeah, I really like that, and counting the um, months after what happens in, in nature rather than going by dates in the calendar. Maybe you want to just quickly say what the six seasons are. Okay. Um, okay, we have um, winter and then we have spring. The first uh, spring, give me your book, I, I need to look at this. <laughs> this is a little nerve wracking being in front of. Uh, what, what you're looking for? The, the six seasons, yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, right now is Pippon, winter, and uh, next coming up will be Siguan, and um, Siguan will be the sunshine, it, the days are longer, the, uh, it's, the temperatures are warming up, things are changing, but we don't see leaves budding until later in spring meus come in and uh, the, you'll start hearing the uh, frogs, they're bubbling from the ponds and the world is uh, coming to a new season. So we say sequin and meus come in. Then we have neep and it's hot, all the berries are out and all the lakes are open. And um, Takoakin is a, a double season here again. Takoakin, like I said, the leaves are changing, the moose are walking, the birds are starting uh, to head south, and uh, th uh, yeah, the bears are hibernating. Mikiskau is the still fall. Things are freezing up, and uh, we're not seeing too much activity outside and then Pippon. So we, they, the people of the North just divided it up 
into, into, into that. Yeah, into six, right? And so mm -hmm. Miyoskamen and um, Migiskau are the two ones that are added in the, in the Cree calendar, and that's break up and freeze up. So that's the times when the um, lakes and rivers are freezing and thawing. That's in the in between seasons. <laughs> Um, there's some questions for, from the grade two class from Clavet School. Um, did I say that right? Clavet? Yes. Um, how old were you when you started writing books? Well, I remember when I was in kindergarten, <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> even write yet, but I actually started copying a book. And uh, it was a book, actually, I, um, I think it was about a, um, a little bird hatching, and I and I painted the bird and, and it, in its nest and its eggs, and I started writing all the words around it, even though I had no idea what they meant. And I think since ever that time, I've been wanting, I've been wanting to be a writer and illustrator. So I was in kindergarten um, when I started writing or making my first books. So she's been writing a long time. <laughs> I, I haven't uh, written as long, but... Um, I think if you divided up your page into three parts, um, like by folding it and starting to draw pictures and then telling about that picture, there, there's your story starting out. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it could be small. It could be the tiniest idea you have. I remember one, um, maybe I'm taking a lot of time here, but I'm a... Uh, thinking about uh, school closures when I was teaching. I said, what, what were you doing when you heard on the radio that the school is closed today? And how did you feel? So there was a little story budding there. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, my best story being a teacher was I was uh, very happy. I was washing my face. I was eating my breakfast. And then the radio said, no school today for <laughs> Bell's Point. I was so sad, he said. <laughs> and stories make us sad, stories make us happy. That's still your story. You keep mm -hmm. writing. Yeah, and there's another question very similar. How long have you been writing for? So, so even though I wanted to be a writer and illustrator, um, others always kept telling me, um, you have to find a real job, you have to find something that makes money. And I tried that, I tried that for a long time. But when I went into the bookstores, I always ended up back in the children's book section looking at picture books and, and looking at all the illustrations in there. And, and, and I realized that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to be a writer and illustrator for children and young adults. So uh, it wasn't until I was almost 40 years old before my first book with Bernice was published. And, and I've published uh, many um, um, young adult novels and children's books since. But um, um, yeah, it took me a long time to get there. And the next question is, how did you get the idea for your book? And I think it started, uh, I was um, doing an arts class at pre camp school, and, and Bernice was the Cree language and culture teacher there. And I walked in the classroom, and I saw the Cree calendar on the wall. And I looked at it, and I said, well, that makes so much more sense to count the, the moons after what happens in the season. That would make an awesome children's book. And then Bernice said, <laughs> I've always wanted to write a book. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> so she brought her lunch the next day, and then the rest is history. We started visiting then. And then uh, the great two class also wants to know how we made the book. How did he make the spine, the cover, and the back of the book? So we only wrote the book, and I made all the illustrations, and we sent it away to a publisher. And they put it into a book for us. And then they sent it to a printer, and then one day we got 2,000 books sent to us by mail. <laughs> and um, yeah, so they made the book for us. How do you not run out of ideas? The student was asking, I only last three pages. <laughs> oh, the book can take so many different angles. You just have to decide. So how many <laughs> starts and <laughs> did we have writing this book? Yeah, it's it's busy, and you have to narrow it down to what you can keep and what you, you want to expand on. Yeah, and you have a whole lifetime of memories that, you know, were mm. inspiring your ideas. So mm. um, how do you make the illustrations so good? Well, 
thank you first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, it's practice. Um, I start out by making little sketches, just like little thumbnails, tiny little drawings, and nobody can really read them. They just look really squiggly. And then I start painting them a little bit bigger with pencils. And then I start looking at photographs. Bernice had some photos, but I also found some on the internet. And, and then I make a real nice outline. And then I transfer that onto watercolor paper. And then I add my watercolors um, to it. So it takes me quite a few days to make just one, one painting. Mm -hmm. And we still had uh, jobs, like she was teaching adults and I was teaching mm -hmm. children. So we didn't always get to meet. And uh, I think if, um, if I could say there was uh, a part here that I, I had a little question about, remember the book came and it said, make any changes you want. <laughs> and I'm saying, take that uh, <laughs> fishnet away. My mom didn't do fishnets. <laughs> she was uh, too busy with the children. And, but it was too late. And if you look back at history, people, the mm -hmm, women mm -hmm. did the net, mm -hmm. net sorting. The men were out uh, uh, hunting and uh, preparing food for home. And uh, th they all shared in the jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, how long did it take you to make this book? So I think from the idea to when it was actually finished, it was probably well over a year, wasn't it? <laughs> I say we started in f February and we ended up in November. But I meant... Um, just the writing. Just the writing and then we had to meet with elders yes. to, to get the feel as to what they thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, applied, and it, and that's with a lot of uh, permission gathering as well. It was a, it was a big community effort, mm -hmm. and then we asked three language experts to go over the spelling and, yeah. um, and help us uh, with that. So, and then I had to make the illustrations, of course, and we brought all the sketches to the elders, and then I made mm -hmm. the um, full illustrations after. And yeah, and then it had to wait till it was printed. So I think it was well over a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, also live close to each other uh, where we live out of town. Mm -hmm. So we would just gather, phone each other and visit as we walked mm -hmm. the mile and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also went to visit schools. So we maybe, the maybe the question should be, how many miles did it take you to write the book? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we went to visit schools after the book was published and uh, went to Buffalo Narrows, Isle of Cross, Beauval, Green Lake, Pine House. And the questions were so valuable, so uh, fun. And we also took the book south. We went to Prince Albert for uh, a family literacy day, I I'd say like about four years ago. Maybe five years ago, <laughs> and then four years ago, three years ago was Yorkton. And every trip has been so valuable. Mm -hmm. It's so good to see uh, people uh, appreciate uh, another view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these were the questions um, that we had um, that were given us before. And then there's lots coming more in over the Facebook live feed. So Phaedra, you're going to have to. <laughs> Help us out here. The grade three students at St. Bernard School asked, what was your favorite part of creating this book? So what was our favorite part of creating this book? Oh, I think it was walking. <laughs> 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 After you're in school all day with work and, uh, yeah, sharing stories as we walked. Yes. I think the listening to Benisa's stories, that was, I think, my very favorite part because um, in the end, it only ended up being one sentence per every month and per page, but behind every page there was this big, big story. That, and, and Bernice has been telling stories in the video, so she's been telling these stories, and out of these stories we, 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 made, we made the book, so that was my favorite part. Um, Penguin School is asking, how many stories um, have you written? Um, uh, we, we wrote the, Bernice and I wrote this one together, 
and I have made another book uh, with an um, elder here, Lit Ida Trombley, and then I also wrote uh, two, two novels for um, children and young adults. <laughs> oh, we're fine, thank you. Just fine. <laughs> yes, they're asking how are we today. So it's a, it's it's a really fun uh, being here and visiting with Bernice and remembering all the uh, good things about how we made the book. And mm -hmm. yeah, so thanks for having us here and listening. Bernice mm -hmm. and Miriam, we are grade five class in Melville. What advice would you give to young authors? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say start writing, um, decide, just, just, uh, write away, write, 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 and then decide what you're going to keep, what you don't. And, um, there, everything is so valuable. Yeah. It'll, um, uh, be a good keepsake, even if you don't, um. Uh, you know, develop it any farther. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. It's just, first of all, just write it out. Don't think about what anybody thinks. Don't think about spelling or grammar and all those things. Just like get your idea out. And, and I always think is if you're really passionate about what you write, um, then it will also set a spark in other people. Like, so mm -hmm. if you find something that you're really passionate, that you love doing and, and you write about that, um, I think it, it will, um, um, help you enjoy it first of all, but it will also help that others are gonna enjoy the book, book after. And then, so once you get that first draft down, um, only then you start to worry about, you know, um, do I have to maybe do some changes so that my readers understand what I'm saying? So you can gift your story to somebody and, can, and, uh, and ask them to read it and ask them to ask you questions about the story to make sure they understand um, how you want the story to sound or to, to, um, to be like. And then, yeah, yeah and, and after that, only after that, at the very, very end, you start looking and worrying about punctuation and grammar and all that stuff that I'm not very good <laughs> at either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a good question. How do you make knits? Mm -hmm. um, my mom used to take a pattern of your hand. You, you, you follow along with a pencil and uh, see yes, how yeah. it's sized, uh, what, what size your uh, Hands hand are. is. <laughs> Oops. Then he, she would put it on paper, like we used to have a lot of uh, craft paper, the brown paper when we were growing up. Uh, she would uh, make a, a mitt over that. And then um, if it's going to be lined, if you're going to put sheepskin underneath and it has to be a little bit bigger. So they make those alterations. And then the design, what colors of beads would you use, that type of thing. What fur, black fur, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be brown fur, like beaver. Mm -hmm. And uh, you decide on that. And um, everything gets sewn together. And. Um, we used to have. Um, That's a bee uh, right here. 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 Um, we used to have. Um, hides made by us. We used to have to take the hair off the hide, turn it over, and take the the the, mm -hmm. the skin side. Make those. If you didn't have those in the middle of winter, then this is where that commercial hide. We would buy this hide, and I think it's cow hide. They would use that, and mm -hmm. um, so I think mm -hmm. I think if I can go off the uh, <laughs> d deep end here, yeah. uh, we all need to work together. We both like we learn from each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember um, this is just a, a small uh, inter interjection, the real fur, the oh, real yeah. hide. What kind of hide? Moose hide, I think. And I guess it smells so good. Yeah. And then the cow hide. Oh, yeah, we have to live together, work together. Yeah, it's a big, big, big process to scrape a moose hide, smoke tan it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, what other questions do we have? How cold is it there? <laughs> oh, this, this morning was minus 27. It was chilly. <laughs> and yesterday was minus 17. So that was a big surprise to see this cold this, this morning. This morning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do the dogs pull the sled? <laughs> well, I brought a little um, toboggan here. That's um, actually the... Um, a model of the toboggan I have at home, and and right down in, in front here, you'll um, pull, uh, you, you hook up the dogs, and the dogs are all wearing harnesses, and um, and they always love to run. I like, really like this about the dogs; they just always love, love, love to run. So um, once they're harnessed up, and and you tell them let's go, or whatever you might want to say, um, they're just gonna take off, and they pull you along on your sleigh. Uh, you, I'll, I'll have to ask you one question. How do you say left and right to your dogs? <laughs> There's special words for those. Yeah, I say G when I want to make them to go right, and G. left when I want to make them, uh, sorry, ha, when ha. I want to make them go. G and ha. But in Cree, it's uh, you and cha. You and cha, yeah. You, you. <laughs> and the leader just takes off. <laughs> and then. Cha. I got a, I got a dog from Jack Cook in South End one year, and. Um, he said, oh, it's an excellent leader. So I tell the dog, go G, and the dog does nothing. <laughs> and so I phone him up and I say, your dog doesn't listen to me. And he said, well, are you talking English or are you talking Cree? Oh, what a good question. Eh? <laughs> so I used you and Sha, and the dog was fine. <laughs> Our grade four or five class from Coronation Park School in Regina would like to know where you are right now. Where are you reading the book? Uh. Okay, uh, we're in Erange right now. We're at the library today. And when we read the book, we were in Miriam's backyard mm -hmm. in December. So it was a little chilly then for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> you can see the steam coming out of our mouth. That's probably yeah. why they were asking how cold it is. Yeah. What is your favorite moon? Oh, nice questions. Uh. Um, I like March, I think. Um, what I like about um, Mikasuipisim is it's almost uh, the season is coming. We're anticipating mm -hmm. uh, a nice change. And uh, the snow is crusty, so you can ride anywhere on the mm -hmm. surface. Mm -hmm. You can walk anywhere you like, and um, even the squirrels, like they just go. Yeah. We have windows at our house uh, that face the, the bush, and you could see the squirrels chasing each other in, in March. And um, yeah, and the moon shines, mm -hmm. and everything, you could see everything for miles. I think I'd have to say the same, actually, and especially with the dogs, because the dogs are all trained up, and it's getting warmer. You can spend longer time outside, and yeah, and then you start um, waiting for the first eagle to come back. Oh, <laughs> I just can't wait <laughs> for a mix of <laughs> Good question. Are there 12 moons or 13? I think that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> so the Cree calendar is, a, is originally a moon calendar. So it has 13 moons because it goes with the phases of the moon. And, um, and we mentioned in, 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 um, in the video already, there's different moon names for every season because um, different things are happening during that moon. So but all in all, there's um, 13 moons. So when we made the TH version for the book, um, up here in the north, they have more um, colder moons to, to correspond to the English ones. And in the south, they have more warmer moons to correspond to the English ones. When you take both books together, you actually have all the 13 moons. Exactly. <laughs> and um, that was one of our questions, too, if we can go back like three questions back. We couldn't decide what dialect should we write this in, the mm -hmm. Y dialect or the Larange uh, TH dialect. Because if you combine those two, then you have everything covered. All your bases are covered. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that's why we printed the second book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But it was a difficult decision to make if we wanted the 13 moons or, or the 12, but because we um, also wanted it to correspond then to the English calendar. 
you 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 especially wanted the the 12 moons and mm -hmm. and go with the english seasons good question though where does the story take place not sure what you said is it in saskatchewan i heard lacrosse okay um i moved here about um here about being la range about 1980 i think and uh, I grew up on the northwest side of the uh, province. It's uh, near um, Meadow Lake, Buffalo Narrows, that area. And um, we speak the Y dialect in that region. And then that Y dialect region uh, spans out into North Battleford, um, Alberta, southern Saskatchewan. And then there's pockets of uh, people that speak different dialects like La, La, La Range, yeah. and then there's another dialect that we haven't identified yet, and um, that's my regret. Okay. Uh, Cumberland House, that region, they speak the N dialect. It, we can um, understand each other, but it's sometimes a hit and miss because uh, we have a different dialect. Groups of different but groups. I of think people. when we were making the book, though, we, we wanted it. It was it's not on Saskatchewan, and and and, and I mean it's Bernice grew up in Alala Cross, but what she's doing with her family, I think, happened all over northern Saskatchewan. So mm -hmm. I think what families were doing is very similar, and um, everybody does things a little bit different. But the story takes place in northern Saskatchewan and could be at many many different places. I'm glad uh, you, you said that because I was thinking about that last night. Like people in Alash would have the same um, pattern of uh, days, uh, same activities happening in their households. Same would be happening at um, um, Wollaston mm -hmm. up north um, and same at Cumberland House. Mm -hmm. Like this is all family life mm -hmm. of the north I'd say. Mm -hmm. The First Nations from Kowakatoos Reserve. My question is, what made you start writing books? Um, I think when you're um, First Nation uh, youth growing up in northern Saskatchewan, there are so many uh, stories up here. We have our uh, legends and winter is st uh, story time. But um, we'd also tell those, and if you're stuck in a tent, like mm -hmm. moose hunting, and you can't go home because of winds. Mm -hmm. um, but we also had political things changing, and my parents were very involved. Uh, well, actually, my dad was involved. My mom just uh, played a part. And uh, so, I always knew there was, there had to be um, some way of putting the word out mm -hmm. as to uh, how people feel. And that's where I think that idea of a book was, yeah. Yeah, and, and for me, I think it was just um, learning from, like I moved from Germany to come here, what, 19, 20 years ago now. And for me, it was just all new what I was learning. And, and I always thought every child in Canada now is that. It's only me who doesn't know that. But then I realized, no, children don't know what the you know, Cree calendar is like. And, and I thought it was such an important way to look at the world. And it changed the way I looked at the world. And I think that was, for me, a reason why I wanted to, to make this book with, with Spanish. Mm -hmm. Do we have time for more questions? It's getting close to the end now. <laughs> Where did you get the beads for the mitts? Oh, um, we had stores, like the base store had beads. That's where we bought them from, at Isla Cross, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. From grade one, French immersion at Connaught mm. School in Regina. Did Cree people ever keep fish for pets? <laughs> Why did they hunt? What are cranberries? How long did the plants take to grow? Holy, lots of questions. That's great, <laughs> yeah. Um, no pets, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's only the introduction of the government uh, starting new species in different little small lakes. That's all I saw, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, cranberries, they're low bush cranberries. They grow next to the ground and mostly, I think they like the uh, north, north uh, sky. Mm -hmm. If you see um, moss growing on the hillside, they like sand. To, if you face to the north, that's where you'll have um, lush berry mm -hmm. bushes. And the, uh, if they stay longer, they're a little bit of, um, I don't have the word, sour. Yeah, yeah, the tiny, tiny red berries, and, and I love them. They're a little bit um, tart, they came a little bit tart, but um, you, can, you can pick them all year round almost because after, after they, they grew, of course they're ripe in, in the fall, but then the snow covers them and then early next spring, you can still pick the cranberries and then they're slightly fermented and really, really sweet. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're wonderful berry that we have up here. I forgot the other question. <laughs> um, <laughs> it says, your ladies are amazing, loving it. What was your favorite childhood memory? Will you write another book? Grade five, Pleasantdale School, Esteban, Saskatchewan. Um, I think so. Um, <laughs> oh. I'm always <laughs> writing a book. <laughs> I'm always writing a book. I'm I, writing three right now. Yeah. <laughs> My uh, parents are so uh, involved in um, giving us uh, a happy home, but we've also had um, so many problems. Like I said, uh, changes were happening. Our community got into a new uh, school system. First, it used to be with the church. And um, the parents were saying, well, maybe uh, church leading the school is not a good idea. We should go with what the province is learning. And so we had to go through that change in um, when I was like 13, 14. And there was uh, changes in the community, people opposed and people not. And my dad was uh, of the seven votes that the uh, pros and cons of the school board. My dad was the um, deciding vote <laughs> and we went provincial. So I wasn't popular in my class. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking there's a story there. Mm -hmm. Whether I tell that story or whether I have somebody write it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. up in the air yet. Mm -hmm. Good. Last, last, question. last question, yeah. Um, how did you find each other, grade six, seven, um, uh, St. Elizabeth's Regina? <laughs> uh, I knew she was there because in a small place like Potato Lake, you sort of uh, see people, you hear people there. And uh, I worked with um, her husband's mother. Mm -hmm. And so I knew they were, yeah, living in the region. And then the, the Quincy got married and she was a dog musher. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's how we knew each other. And then when she came to my classroom at Precan, that's sort of the first time we, we started talking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think we told that story about how we, um, how I saw the Cree calendar on the wall and um, um, how Bernice always wanted to write a book and, and, and she liked the outdoors, I like the outdoors, the connection to the great outdoors, which is the theme of this book here too, uh, this, um, mm -hmm. which was today, today too. And yeah, so we did a lot of walking outside together and talking about, you know, what people did um, during the seasons outside and that's, um, mm -hmm. and we've been friends ever since. Yeah. yeah so. Are we uh, out of time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you for all the wonderful questions. Right. I am so um, um, tickled that this this book was chosen. I am so pleased and mm -hmm. um, and good to see so many uh, people out there showing interest. And hi to all my friends. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for all, all your questions. All my canoe friends, they know who <laughs> they are. <laughs> Thanks for all your questions and thanks for the Literacy Network for having us here and for and you guys all to listen. <laughs>
Bye. Thanks.